Hi everyone, Anthony Fantano here, internet's busiest music nerd. Hope you're doing well. And it's time for another vinyl update where I go over records and pieces of music that have recently made it into my collection. I, I'm literally running out of room in this thing. I, I have a new shelf coming on its way soon uh, for the holidays, so we're actually gonna be, you know, a new addition to the, to the Fantano family. I have some good records, some fun vinyl, some fun releases to go over with you guys, but first I want to go into our awesome sponsor for this video, the good people over at snups.com. They are a website and an app for your Android or iOS device, information down there in the description, and the platform is pretty much for collectors. And in the little corner of the app that I inhabit, I post and share and look at other people's vinyl collections. Over there right now, as you can see, I sort of have different shelves for different kinds of records that I've posted up on there, personal favorites, some new stuff, some classics, some weird and, and rare records that I have in my collection that I thought would be special for some people to look at. But also, there is an explore feature where you can start and explore a variety of different groups on the platform. And we have a needle drop group on there, which if you guys download this app, I highly recommend and encourage you to join up with the group. As I said in the last video, uh, I was gonna look through some of the stuff people have posted. Ooh, rock and metal vinyl from Marvin. We have some Nirvana records over here, the MTV Unplugged, of course, in utero. We have, we, we, we have, we have the trio. So we have a door shelf from, uh, from Seamus. What's going on in there? Yep, you have, you, you do have a lot of Doors records and you have LA Woman too. The, the, the craziest, weirdest Doors album <laughs> there ever was. Oh, baby. I love a good Death Grips final. I'm not, I'm not even a Linkin Park fan, and I'm like slightly jealous of this. What is this beautiful red splatter vinyl? <laughs> the Road to Revolution. 12 wows. People are wowing it. Ooh, death, human. That's a good one. That's an excellent death metal record. So yeah, guys, link to the app down there. Get involved in the community. Check out some other stuff people have posted. Check out what I've posted. Get new and sort of up-to-date information on what pops into my record collection because instead of waiting for a new vinyl update, I just kind of pop a picture in there and just let people know, hey, this is what's just recently made it in here. Again, hit them up at snups.com or find more information down in the description box to get this app on your device. Let's go into the vinyl update. This first thing I'm talking about here isn't even really music. It's a book. I just want to shout out my dude Marlon over at Gangster Doodles. We recently did a thing with his book. I don't even know how many copies there are of this thing left, but I wanted to just talk about this here and kind of just mention again how flattered I am to have been immortalized in this book along with my along with my my late dog sushi. So again, I just appreciate that. Check out Gangster Doodles over on uh, Instagram. And also I want to give a shout out to the good boys over at Oxbow who sent me this little book, The Thin Black Book, which is kind of this little verbal pictorial compendium of everything that one may want to know about sort of the creative process or the lyrics or uh, sort of liner note information relating to Oxbow's latest record, The Thin Black Duke, which if you guys are not aware, I've given it a positive review. In my opinion, it is one of the best experimental rock records of the year. And uh, not only do you get some interesting lyrical sort of uh, little tidbits in here and lots of interesting photos of the band performing, of the band, uh, you know, back in the day, of the band in the studio over here. But you have these little blurbs written by other artists for the band, for the book. Uh, even Diamanda Gallus is featured on here, uh, saying, your band sucks, your voice sucks, <laughs> and you have small <laughs> hands. Jamie Stewart of Shushu is uh, quoted in this book as well. Like, a lot of people just talking about what makes... Um, Oxbow special. And and this is a photo of uh, Eugene actually taking a piss in the subway with the rest of the band just like, oh boy, there goes Eugene peeing on the subway platform again. That That's that's just Eugene. Uh, so. so this first piece of vinyl you guys may already be familiar with because I recently gave it a review. If you have not watched my review of this thing, please go back and do. Uh, this is the record Highly Rare from Micaiah McCraven. This is an interesting little jazz record. He is a jazz drummer and essentially pulled together a bunch of live recordings of him and his friends, chopped them up into beats. So it's this cool kind of like jazz beat music crossover that's kind of grimy, kind of lo-fi. Uh, not a whole lot to say about the packaging here, you know, but it is a very nice uh, sounding piece of vinyl. Very nice record. 
not a whole lot of material on it. You know, it's, it's almost like an EP of sorts uh, in a way, but the material that's on here is really killer. Just straightforward black vinyl. Nice little uh, interesting design on the sleeve there. Definitely give this thing a listen if you haven't. I do like that little fun uh, jacket sleeve there, which does contain like a nice little fun explainer as to what the record is all about. And uh, there you go. Some of these are actually so new, I haven't even opened them up yet. I'm just gonna pop this one open with you guys. Uh, this is actually a copy of the new Arm & Hammer album. I hit up Billy Woods on PayPal, bought a new CD copy of his Known Unknowns album, because toward the end of the year, I do tend to go back in whatever records I have not purchased yet that are some of my favorites of the year. I pick them up, I buy a copy, support the artist and just sort of get a get a physical copy of a album that I really like. And he sent me a vinyl copy of the new Arm & Hammer album, which, I mean, it was a little underwhelming to me in a way, but still, uh, I do think it is a kind of a special record and I do like the grimy aesthetic and vibe to it. And I did like the last Arm & Hammer record quite a bit. So uh, it is nice to be able to kind of continue the collection. Ooh, I didn't know you did colored on this. Billy, you have a nice kind of brownish vinyl here like a like a like a chocolatey a milk chocolate vinyl record here that's quite nice very happy to have another piece of billy woods vinyl in the collection in there in the collection it's in there this next one is also sealed and comes from a friend of mine jeremy who edits a lot of the videos jeremy edits a lot of the videos shout out to jeremy for editing so many of the videos he got me for christmas pressed on 180 gram vinyl akira symphonic suite I haven't, even, I haven't even listened to this thing yet. I haven't even put it on. I listened to the soundtrack before. I enjoy the soundtrack. I'm not exactly sure what makes the symphonic suite different. I've not had an opportunity to put this on my turntable yet, so I'm not completely sure. I'm going to find out. But um, it, it's so far, it's, I'm just like really impressed with the, uh, the packaging on this thing. I mean, it looks incredible. Akira, one of the greatest animes of all time. One of my favorite movies. Nice. Beautiful. <gasps> Beautiful gatefold. Oh, that gatefold oh, is making me have a sad cum, baby. <laughs> Sorry if that was inappropriate. Oh, this is a nice little beautiful little liner note package over here explaining the whole thing. Cool. Oh, wonderful. Wonderful. Oh, nice. Nice sleeves. Thank you so much, Jeremy. Jeremy, Jeremy, Jeremy. What a beautiful gift. It's nice to have friends who know things and are and are nice. All right guys, you know what it is. Flower ball. This thing also came with like a card and a decal. I haven't even popped this open either. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry guys, there are just so many of these I haven't popped open. <laughs> but I've heard this record so many times already. I haven't listened to the vinyl itself, but it was most likely recorded digitally. So I can't imagine the vinyl is gonna to sound too much different from the actual digital version. Oh, nice. Album photos go here. <laughs> album photos go here. An amazing photographer and I took some sick photos for this album that were supposed to go here, but her agents or what the fuck ever said that it couldn't happen, so I relied on cell phone pics. Love you next time. Okay. Well, I guess album photos were supposed to go there and they did not go there, so it just that just is what it is, I suppose. <gasps> Ooh, beautiful, clear, beautiful orange. Ooh, it's so beautiful. Nice, this is very nice. Oh, very cool. We have a nice little lyric sheet over here with the different sections with each song, sort of featuring some images and different colors and uh, uh, different lyrics, obviously. Um, the, the whole back of the poster is sort of like the print of the J card for the cassette version. That's that's funny, that's creative. Very happy with this. This packaging is really good. Um, even the, you know, sort of the, what ended up happening here is kind of funny, kind of silly. So de definitely in league with Tyler's sense of humor. One more that I have not popped open. The rest of them I have uh, is this Raincoats copy. This is uh, actually one of my favorite um, little post-punk albums. I didn't anticipate the packaging was gonna be that illustrious. I just kind of wanted it on vinyl because, I mean, I figured this this record, this album, I mean, it was recorded during an era where it's gonna sound best and sound most appropriate on this format. And uh, it is a nice, fun, little noisy female post-punk record with a lot of personality to it. Some nice, fun little pictures of the band with some, looks like some lyric sheets and everything. Really good band. Oh, 
I didn't even know this. My heart be still. It's like a beautiful cherry red. Wow, I didn't even know that. I didn't even know it was gonna be a beautiful cherry red. Wonderful, things are just coming up melon. Got a nice red Raincoats vinyl. I didn't even know it's gonna be red. If you guys have um, no idea who the Raincoats are, I highly recommend their track Fairy Tale in the Supermarket or the wonderful cover they have done of the song Lola by uh, the Kinks. One, two, three. Ramones! One, two, three, four! I mean, you can't really go wrong with this Ramones record. So many of their best songs are on here. Blitzkrieg Bop, Beat on the, Bar Beat on the Brat, Judy is a Punk, Today Your Love, Tomorrow the World. Fucking love that song, 53rd and 3rd. Uh, this, is, this is a slightly used copy of the album. Nothing really to report about it all that much other than that some of the greatest and most classic and uh, amazing punk music of all time is located on this thing. Um, what the heck? What the heck is going on over here? The fucking label is printed off the fucking center of the record. What? Am I gonna, I'm gonna have to take this shit back. What? 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 Is there a way you can peel this shit? It, it is literally over the last song on the record. It's not like that on the B-side. B-side's totally fine. B-side's good. A side is completely fucked. All right, well, I know I popped this open and I've already listened to it and it's fantastic. Uh, this is the debut album from Betty Davis, a funk and soul singer who used to be married to Miles Davis in a lot of ways was a muse to the guy, introduced him to a lot of psychedelic rock and funk music uh, that greatly influenced a lot of the experimental and jazz fusion stuff that he would do uh, later on in his career. Uh, she was married to him for a very short time, came out with these records afterwards, and um, this debut album of hers is an amazing contribution to the funk sound. Uh, incredible record. Uh, Vinyl Please actually sent this over to me. Really happy with it. Lyric sheet over here. Very nice, like, glossy, classy, black finish on this thing. And uh, the record itself is absolutely gorgeous. It is this kind of silvery, grayish, bluish finish. And it's it's not just a gray, it's it's literally, if you see it in person, it might not show up on camera, it's kind of shiny. There's like a silvery, shiny quality to the wax on this thing. And uh, the music itself is amazing. One of my favorite funk records. Uh, I'm so happy to have it on vinyl. I'm so happy to have it on such a special package over here. If you give a listen to this thing, the grooves are amazing. Like every groove on this record, pretty much every groove on this record sounds like the roughest, wildest, longest night of sweaty sex you've ever had in your entire life. That's what it sounds like. That's what every groove on this record sounds like. And of course, Betty Davis's just like high-pitched, raspy, wailing voice like only enhances that quality and her incredibly sexual, uh, very, very uh, rough lyrics. And there's also a very nice little insert in this thing, sort of a detailing. Betty's come up her background, her connections with Miles. It's actually a very nice, amazing funk album. Amazing funk record. Gotta give a shout out to Sleep. Picked up this 12 inch copy of the Clarity uh, released or re-released on Southern Lord Records a little while ago. Uh, picked up a nice orange copy for myself. Features a cool little etching of an astronaut on the album, which I'm not exactly sure, rather the, the 12 inch. I'm not sure if you guys can kind of see that. You kind of can. You can kind of see it. One side has the etching, one side has the clarity on it, which if you're into stoner rock and stoner metal, it's pretty good. You know, not quite as epic as some of Sleep's more notable material like Holy Mountain, but still very good. Couple more in the pile left, uh, Prince, Controversy, 1981 album. Actually came out uh, shortly before Purple Rain and all that. Not quite as iconic with all of those grand, large, poppy ballads all over some of his following records. Uh, but I still feel like this album is a little underrated and very good. I like the groovy, synthetic, danceable vibe of a lot of these tracks. Kind of reminds me of like, you know, what artists like LCD Sound System would be copying decades and decades and decades later. So the grooves on this record are actually really great, incredible. And uh, actually one of Prince's most political tracks lands on this album, uh, Ronnie Talk to Russia, I believe it's called, yeah. So it's not often you hear Prince getting like kind of political on a track, and uh, finally, uh, it's just pretty much a straightforward black vinyl package, 180 gram, uh, but also, just gotta show you guys over here, this, this, this is, uh, this is, this is, uh, 
quote me on this. This is my summer bod right here. 2018, Anthony Fantano, this is my summer bod. Giving a shout out here to Primal Scream. I, I, I always forget how to pronounce this album. Screamadelica. I, I guess it's easy. I, I, I keep thinking it's like Screamadelia, but it's, it's, scream, it's Screamadelica. This is one of these albums from the 90s that kind of exemplifies just how much of a musical melting pot the 90s were. I feel like there's so much going on stylistically. It should not under any circumstance work. Uh, not only because it should come together like a mess as an entire album, but how many bands are there out there that can combine such wonderful elements of uh, dance music and rock music and like soul and gospel music. And there's just so much uh, diversity on this thing. Uh, so many amazing tracks. One of my favorites has to be uh, Don't Fight It, Feel It. Uh, amazing grooves on that track. And, uh, you know, nothing too special about the packaging. We have a nice little insert over here. Nice picture of the band, track listing, and heavy, heavy, heavy black 180 gram vinyl over here. Not a gatefold or anything like that, but amazing sounding album. The production sounds so good. There's so many amazing fusions of sounds on this thing that it's, it still blows my mind to this day that uh, there's so much versatility on that record. Uh, and what Primal Scream made on that album was, was so special that not only could a lot of their contemporaries not recreate it, but even they couldn't recreate it to an extent with their following records. And finally, this one I got because I'm a bit of a, a bit of a Devo nerd. This is like an amazing, huge, lengthy, and involved compilation of like demo material from Devo. I haven't even made it through all of it yet. And it is four LPs. Four LPs on like a weird mini CD, which I don't know how the hell I'm gonna play this thing. This is like, like if I put this into a regular, if, if I put this into a regular CD player, like either in my Mac or in my car, is, is this gonna get lost? Will I never see this again? Most likely. So I'm <laughs> not exactly sure when or if I'm gonna play this, but there are four LPs on this thing, including a fun little poster that I have not opened up yet. Yeah, I, I feel like you have to be kind of deep into Devo folklore to, to sort of, know and appreciate what they were coming from, where they were coming from on that. A lot of people who enjoy Devo or know Devo's music don't quite know or understand the backstory or sort of the concept of the band, why they dressed the way they did, why their music sounded the way it did. Uh, but uh, it's, it's definitely an interesting read if you get a chance to. And from what I've heard so far of this compilation, and again, four whole LPs of it, here's a nice orangey reddish, sort of yellow, little splattery. But some of this early demo material, and I've heard a bulk of Devo studio stuff, and I enjoy a lot of it, but a lot of this early demo material sounds really whacked, way left field. Some of it is much weirder than a lot of what ended up making it onto their studio records, and some of it sounds like I'm listening to an entirely different band. Such a talented group, such talented musicians in the group, it's amazing to kind of hear them in the raw like this and sort of hear this completely unfettered creativity sort of guide them into these like really weird caverns. If you're a hardcore Devo fan and, and you've ever wanted to hear the band in a different light, like I haven't even heard this whole thing yet and I can already highly recommend this. And honestly for demos, like a lot of the material on this thing, it doesn't sound too bad. It's not too distorted, it's not too lo-fi, it's not too rough. The sound is, is quite nice. What sounds rough some of the time is a little bit of the mixing and performances and the way the instrumentation is assembled, but really the sound itself is pretty good. Everything comes through pretty clearly. So again, hardcore Devo fans, take notice. A Devo, Recombo, DNA, nice fun little compilation containing a lot of early stuff that hopefully I can get a chance to listen to that all the way through because there's a lot of interesting material that I've heard thus far. <coughs> and guys, that's gonna do it for this vinyl update. Hopefully you got turned on to some cool stuff in this episode. Hopefully you get uh, the chance to listen to some stuff that you haven't heard before or that you saw some interesting things that might make you wanna pick up a vinyl package that you hadn't previously considered picking up. And uh, I love you, okay? Have a good one. Transition over here next to my head is a link to our vinyl update playlist, also a link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, vinyl updates, <gasps> forever.